let's dive into anemia. So what is anemia? Anemia is basically, it's a condition in the, in the blood. And it generally is an affect on the actual red blood cells. So what you're seeing here in this diagram is you're seeing red blood cells. Okay, that's these red discs here, I'll outline in black. Those are red blood cells. That's what normal blood cells look like. They're biconcave blood cells uh, as opposed to big spheres. And what happens is they carry oxygen, okay, to your tissues. So red blood cells, what happens is they're in your lungs. And when you breathe in, the oxygen from the atmosphere, from the environment, the red blood cells are there in your lungs to pick that oxygen up and carry it away to all of your tissues. And you have to understand that oxygen is a rate limiting step for energy. It's how your body generates energy. And if you don't have enough oxygen in your red blood cells being delivered to your tissues, this is a state of anemia. And this can happen for a number of different reasons. One of the reasons is, is you don't have enough red blood cells. So sometimes people don't have an adequate quantity of red blood cells. Sometimes what happens inside of our red blood cells, so if we look at a red blood cell, let me just kind of make a picture here and draw for you. Red blood cell from the side view kind of looks like that. It's a discoid. It's like a, this was a sphere, but imagine smushing in the sides. Those indentations are where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide sit. So again, when you're breathing out, those red blood cells carry carbon dioxide back to your lungs so that you can exhale. When you're breathing in oxygen, those red blood cells pick up the oxygen to, and deliver the tissue. So there's this exchange of gas of oxygen and carbon dioxide coming in and out. The oxygen is critical. The carbon dioxide is a byproduct of energy production. So the oxygen we need for that energy. So if you don't have adequate red blood cells, then you have an oxygen delivery problem. It's not that there's a deficiency of oxygen in our atmosphere as much as it is there's a deficiency of your ability to carry that oxygen to your tissue. And again, this can happen for a number of reasons. It can happen because, number one, your red blood cells are too low. Now, this is important because if your red blood cells are too low, and this is an easy test. Most doctors can measure this with just what's called a simple, complete blood count. If you have low levels of red blood cells, again, that's going to minimize your delivery of the oxygen. For some people, there's a, there's a protein inside of your red blood cells. And let's change our color here. So inside your red blood cells, there's a protein called hemoglobin. Many of you have probably heard of this. This hemoglobin is the protein that helps to carry oxygen. And so hemoglobin is made out of iron, among other things. You need copper to make hemoglobin. And, uh, and if you are low in iron, which is this is the type of anemia most people are familiar with. It's called iron deficiency anemia. It will reduce the quantity of hemoglobin available to carry oxygen. And so you may have plenty of red blood cells, but not enough hemoglobin in your red blood cells to carry that oxygen. So again, we could have low red blood cells. We could have low iron or low hemoglobin. These are, different, again, different kinds of anemia, and some of them have overlap. So again, anemia is when you don't have the ability to carry oxygen or deliver oxygen to your tissues to generate energy to do the day-to-day -day work of cellular function. That's why people that are anemic are oftentimes short of breath. They feel like they can't get enough air air hunger, and that's why they're oftentimes tired. You can sleep 10 hours, you can sleep 12 hours and still wake up exhausted because there's not enough oxygen traveling into your tissue to generate the energy that your body needs. So when we're talking about anemia, this is in a nutshell, this is what we're talking about. Now, let's talk about some of the symptoms of anemia, some of the, especially some of the ones that are the most common. Fatigue is probably, in my experience, and dealing with people is, is one of the most common. Fatigue and exhaustion, regardless of quantity of hours of sleep. So again, you could get, like I said earlier, you could get 10 hours of sleep, you could get a healthy night's nice rest, and you still wake up exhausted or tired. So if you're waking up, you're finding yourself where you get plenty of sleep, you go to bed on time, you wake up, and you're still totally exhausted, suspect anemia, okay? If you have brain fog, if you find yourself walking into your closet, in your bedroom, 
and you find yourself and you, you get into your closet, you can't remember why you went in the closet. Or if you're in your pantry in your kitchen, you can't remember why you went to the pantry. Like you're, you're going and doing things and you can't remember why or, or what that purpose was. That's brain fog, right? Or you can't put, you can think of the word, but you can't put the word to your tongue or to your lips. Um, so you can, you can think of the name that you want, you know what it is, but you can't bring it to your lips, right? That word recall or brain fog is super common as a symptom of anemia as well. Shortness of breath, as I mentioned, also air hunger, sometimes referred to as air hunger, is a very common symptom of anemia. Dizziness, and this has to do with not enough oxygen getting to the brain. And so a low oxygen to the brain will make you dizzy. This is why, you know, some people when they, I just got back from hiking in the mountains. And so, you know, being at sea level where I live in Houston, there's plenty of oxygen, but when you're, you know, two, three miles high in the sky, there's a lot less oxygen, the higher uh, in our atmosphere you go up. And so a lot of people, when they go to altitude, they get dizzy. So like those of you who maybe travel um, and you go to a mountainous region and you start getting dizzy, you start getting shortness of breath, this is because there's less oxygen in the air, right? And, and you're not used to that. And so what people who, who live at altitude, what happens is your body naturally will adjust to that lower oxygen environment by producing more red blood cells. So what I was talking about over here earlier is some people have red blood cells, but some people go to an environment where there's less oxygen. And so they don't have enough red blood cells to carry the lower density of oxygen from the atmosphere. They develop what's called altitude anemias. So if you travel and you get dizzy, this is very, very common to see that happen. Muscle pain. Why? Because muscles have to generate energy on a regular basis. Now, those of you maybe have heard, there's a couple different terms. I'm sure most of you have heard of the term aerobic and the other term anaerobic. These terms are, what does this mean? Aerobic, it means with oxygen. Anaerobic means without oxygen. Now, aerobic and anaerobic refer to the ways that your muscles produce energy. If there's plenty of oxygen, your muscles can make plenty of energy and you can keep going. So an aerobic activity like jogging or an aerobic activity like, um, like aerob aerobics, where people join an aerobics class where there's there's not heavy weights involved and so there's plenty of oxygen your body can continue to breathe in that oxygen and your muscles can continue to generate energy for lengthy periods of time whereas anaerobic is like weight lifting it's when you're lifting heavier weights and there's not enough oxygen coming in to support the muscle so the muscle doesn't have the ability to continue to make energy so it switches to anaerobic and when it does that again that's because there's not enough oxygen energy is still made but it's less efficient so energy production is less efficient and the byproduct is lactic acid builds up in your muscles so your lactic acid in your increases in your muscles and this ladies and gentlemen causes pain chronic pain and sometimes it's perceived incorrectly so sometimes people think they've injured their muscle sometimes people think they have muscle perpetual muscle soreness when in fact they're anemic and their muscles are in constant anaerobic metabolism again it's making energy less efficiently and the byproduct of making energy less efficiently is pain in the muscle so again just like you can you can induce anaerobic anaerobic metabolism in your in your muscle by lifting weight sometimes if you're anemic you you kind of create a perpetual state of that anaerobic metabolism and exercise intolerance is another one and it's connected to muscle pain because you can't tolerate lifting weights or doing that exercise because there's not enough oxygen so you pay a massive price because there's just not enough energy to do it and so people get really really wiped out by their exercise they try to exercise for four minutes or five minutes and they can't do it because again there's not enough oxygen to drive the energetics to 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 generate what's necessary to perform that exercise so these are very very common symptoms of anemia now aside from some of these these common symptoms be remiss to not point out a few other things so one of the other things that we'll see that's very common 
is this right here, anxiety. This is a big one. Anxiety is a very common symptom of anemia because there's not enough oxygen getting to the brain. So it's, it's tied to dizziness and anxiety. But if you find yourself like you've not been an anxious person in your life and all of a sudden you're anxious and you can't talk yourself down, you might be anemic and that might be driving that anxiety. So if those of you that struggle with anxiety, ask your doctor to rule out anemia. Ask for the proper blood work. We'll talk about some of that here shortly where you can stick with me. We'll talk about that blood work. You can go back and request from your doctor. But that anxiety is a very, very common one. The other one is sleep problems and what typically happens with anemia is it's trouble staying asleep what happens is you can fall asleep okay because you're exhausted but your brain won't let you stay asleep um, and it's because when the brain doesn't get adequate oxygen when you're trying to sleep it wakes you up it startles you this is part of you know the anxiety and the, and the startlement it's because there's a there's an adrenaline hormone that is secreted as a result of that lack of oxygen. Your body will try to use adrenaline to compensate and that will create and drive that anxiety, but it will also make it hard for you to get a good night's sleep, which can compound the problem. Sleep won't correct anemia, but rest is still important. And when you can't stay asleep and you're anxious and you're tired, right? And all these things are already happening. It's just a compounded issue. So again, anxiety and sleep disturbance are two that are very commonly dismissed or not talked about. A lot of times when, uh, um, let me back that up again. When women go to their doctor uh, to, to you know, have that conversation and they're, they're describing this, what are they given? They're typically, they're given medicine, right? SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, this class of medication that doctors will prescribe oftentimes to treat anxiety. Uh, drugs like Paxil or Prozac are examples there. And they'll put a person who's anemic and doesn't really have true anxiety. They have biochemical anxiety induced by lack of oxygen and the doctor gives them an SSRI and they don't do better. And then that SSRI creates IBS. Um, a lot of times it can create IBS and it can create weight gain. You know, how many of you have been in that scenario? Raise your hands in the audience tonight. If you have been in that scenario where you had anxiety, you went to the doctor, you were prescribed an SSRI and you started gaining weight and developing bowel problems because it was the wrong treatment. It's not uncommon to see that happen. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.